Okay. I'm Dennis Reardon, president of Monocotac Audubon, and welcome to, to this evening's uh, community program. As we do every meeting, we wish to honor the indigenous communities native to the chapter area, including the Pagusset, Wepawag, Quinnipiac, Tatakit, Nunkatuk, and Hamanasset people. As we advocate for conservation of the land and its wildlife, we're indebted to the work of native and indigenous communities who cherished the land for thousands of years before European colonization. Let me just review the next three events coming up. Week from Saturday on February 18th, we have an Eagle Watch at Chapog Dam in Southbury, followed by a visit to Bent of the River Audubon Center. On Tuesday, March 14th, Robin LaDesseur will be talking about the birds of Maine, of Maine Islands uh, from her trip to Hog Island last summer. And then on Wednesday, March 22nd, Jeff Spendelo will be talking about Rosia Turns and what research has shown about their, their uh, migration habits, including the critical importance of staging areas on Cape Cod. So register for all of those programs on the Monocotuck website. So let me get the PowerPoint going here. And let's see if I can successfully share the screen tonight. One, one. Here we go. <laughs> you see that all right? Yes. Okay, good. So we're going to start with a uh, bird quiz. Size them up. Order these birds from smallest to largest. We'll give you a couple minutes to work on this. You want to write down the bird names and uh, think about it a little bit while we're watching the first set of slides. You can do that. The answers will come after uh, Donna's uh, slides.
we have a small group tonight so if you want to unmute yourself and uh, comment on any of those suggest uh what what you think might be the smallest and largest uh that's fine is the osprey the largest is Osprey the largest? We will find out. Smallest? American Kestrel. Thrasher? I was also guessing the thrasher. Well, we'll find out in a few minutes. Donna, can you unmute yourself and. Uh... Good evening. I want to thank you for uh, supplying your photos. I really like like them so here's your first one all right so I, i'm gonna apologize now i'm coming off of bronchitis so if my voice goes in and out i i do apologize um one of the things i love to do is watch our our beach birds and this is a group of sanderlings um that i took in stratford on long beach and just um, thinking about our beaches and, and the, talk, the last talk that we had, um, talking about the importance of, of and then the, the upcoming with the um, roseate turns. And these beach areas are just so important for our birds throughout the entire year, uh, winter and summer. And these little guys, I, I just love watching these little guys. They are such characters. If you want to go to the next one. And this is a, a single sanderling. They're a, they're a robin sized bird. Um, this little guy is feeding on some little goody that it found in the sand. Uh, they usually work the, the tide line. And next, and this is a little video I took. My cinematography is not great, but you kind of get an idea of how they um, move about. Uh, there's a, a Dunlin in the middle there uh, that I'll talk about later. But you see them working right, right as uh, at the water's edge there. One of the things that intrigues me is that they're so frantic. That's what I love about them. They're they're just constantly moving about. And you see them picking at some of the shells or their slipper shells. Um, there's one in the back they were picking one up and they'll pick up little bits of uh invertebrates and mollusks and i don't recall if i took this in the, i believe this was a in the winter And this is one of my favorite pictures. Um, this is a, a trio of Dunlin giving me the stink eye. Um, love these little guys too. Uh, the, they usually are in the same areas as the Sanderlings. Um, this was just a small little grouping of a very large flock that had come in, um, again, on Long Beach in Stratford. And they too are uh, robin sized. Uh, birds. And if you want to go to the next, 
And this is another little video clip. This was just a small portion of this mixed flock of Dunlin in the foreground and some Sanderling in the back. Um, I want to give a, a estimate of like maybe 400 birds altogether um, there. It was a little bit of a blustery day. Uh, you see them huddled together. And even though they're resting, they're, they're still an eye, eye to the sky. I'm going to go back to the beginning of this because the way they the way they uh, pop around cracks me up. Yeah, they're all on one leg. Yeah. <laughs> and then this uh, just showing to how they keep themselves warm. And, and again, you know, one leg being exposed to the elements, keeping the other one tucked up inside the feathers. And staying grouped together. They get disturbed like by like by those gulls. Uh they'll resort to using too. Yeah, and unfortunately, people walking the beach with dogs um, is also a problem. Um, I, I had an incident in at Hammond Asset with a group of birds I was trying to photograph, and somebody knew I was there, and they still deliberately walked their dog right through the flock and, you know, sent them scattering to the four winds. Um, so I think we need to try to get people to understand that it's important that we let these birds rest too. I mean, it looked like I was fairly close and all these pictures are going to see look like I'm fairly close to these birds, but quite a few of these images are cropped. So giving the birds a uh, respectful distance. And this is a Sanderling. I took uh, one April up at uh, Race Point on Cape Cod. Uh, just a single individual there. Um, and this is in, I think it was in an April, one, a few years back. And another one I really enjoy taking looks at are the ruddy turnstones. And I always try to practice my flight photography. And this one here came in at just, just the right time. And I was able to snap this shot of, of this bird. They're, they're really pretty. Um, a little bit larger than the Sanderlings. And this one here is feeding on a slipper shell and it picked up and was carrying up onto the beach. And if we could go to the next one. Um, the other thing with our beaches too is that they're nesting areas for, for terns. Uh, this was a shot taken in New Jersey at a breeding colony. These are a couple of um, uh, common terns and this is courting behavior. Uh, male bird had brought in a fish and fed it to the female. And this helps with their pair bonding. And in the background, there's a black skimmer. And this one here is a least tern flying in uh, they're, they're really quite aerobatic. It's really hysterical <laughs> watching how they maneuver there. It's, it's just, they're amazing flyers. And this one here was taken at, uh, Milford Auto Coastal Audubon, um, near there. There is a breeding colony there. And this one here, I think it's, they're the smallest of our terms. Um, this one is a photo, if you look right in the middle, again, this was taken at a distance. That's a typical turn nest, and it's just a shallow depression with a couple of eggs, very cryptically colored, right in the middle of that little depression. If I may interject here, 
that's uh, one of the problems with the birds too, is that uh, they're so well hidden that a dog racing through there could easily step on them and not know it. Yeah. And yeah. again, look, go ahead. No, there's a, a bill coming before the legislature that would allow local police officers to issue a essentially a ticket to people who get within a hundred feet of the string fencing that is put up on on uh, some beaches to protect beach nesting birds. Um, oh, that'll be good. And uh, similarly for people who let their dogs run loose and so on uh, on the beach. Yeah, these birds really need need our space. A lot of them are in trouble, and we need to give them a respectable distance. And do dogs being walked. And I've we've all seen people ignoring the string fencing. And even when I'm out, I try to keep a as wide enough berth as I can, even with the string fencing, not to be right up on it. Right and now. Every... No, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Right now, Econ Police could uh, enforce the uh, the law, but uh, local police can't, and the, the bill would permit local police to do it. Thinking about that there, are, are they going to possibly be maybe closing sections of beaches? So I know they do that in other places. Um, is that something that's on the agenda too, to just close some of these beaches so the birds have have areas just to themselves without people interfering that would be with them? a good idea, but I don't know that that's under consideration right now. Okay. And this here is again, showing a turn, least turn with her eggs. Again, this is a real hard crop of the image. I don't want anybody to think I was right on top of this bird. Um, but you can again see those cryptically colored eggs. And this is a lease turn with a fish and she's got two chicks with her. Again, this is a hard crop of an image. You can see her two little nestlings and even for them, they, they're coloring, they blend right into the sand. And the next one, and again, another hard crop. And this is a turn parent feeding her chick or his chick. I'm not sure uh, how to tell the males and females apart. But when you're respecting them, you, you know, even as a photographer, just trying to keep your distance and you get to see those little intimate activities. Um, this image was taken in New Jersey and similar area of the uh, the turns. And this is a black, uh, black skimmer, larger bird. Um, it, they look very much like turns, but they're in their own uh, taxonomic family, I believe. And they are known for their unusual bills. The, the lower mandible is longer than the upper and they skim the water surface in order to pick up uh, food bits, food items. They're really interesting to watch. And the next one, this was taken in New Jersey as well. And this is a young oyster catcher. Again, in a roped off area, keeping enough distance, even from the rope. And you see this young oyster catcher. And we've had had these nesting even in at uh, the Milford Coastal Audubon. I, I don't think they have very much success last year. I believe the nests were washed away from a storm um, because of the way they located them, unfortunately. They also nest at Sandy Point in West Haven. Okay. And uh, in some cases, I've heard that if the eggs get washed away, if they're if they're like washed away from where the nest 
scrape was, but not too far, the parents will sort of roll them back. Oh, wow. And this again was also at a site in New Jersey. And I actually have to admit this kind of brought tears to my eyes. It was the first time I'd ever seen, <clears throat> excuse me, red knots. And there's one in the center of the frame here among other little shorebirds. Um, these birds are highly dependent on our horseshoe crabs. And because of the depletion of the horseshoe crab population, these birds are taking a severe hit because um, they, they rely so much on, on those laid eggs as they're migrating. Which brings up another bill in the Connecticut legislature, which would put a complete ban on harvesting horseshoe crabs in Connecticut. That would be awesome. Not that the horseshoe crab eggs are critical to red knot here, but horseshoe crabs are critical to the environment. There's so many birds that depend on, on feeding on those eggs too, not just the red knots. And this was a fun image. I totally didn't realize I had actually captured this until I got home. Uh, this is a yellow crowned night heron um, that had grabbed a fiddler crab and was flipping it so that it could swallow it. And you'll see these birds along our coastal areas as well. And this, is, this one here was at the Milford Coastal Audubon. And this was in the summer and a couple of sanderlings. You can see the difference in the coloration, a little bit more of a reddish coloring on, on the, the head and neck, uh, different, a little different from the more white and gray that you saw in the winter plumage. And next, some final uh, piping plovers. Really, really fun to watch these little guys too. And again, I can't keep saying it enough. These birds need our distance. And this image too was, was a crop. Uh, this was a bird uh, that I saw at the Milford Coastal Audubon. Um, they've had some success with breeding pairs there. Um, but yeah, I, I, if, you know, if we can allow these birds a little privacy to um, do what they need to do. You know, all three of those species that you were talking about, the uh, least terns, the oyster catchers, and uh, the um, piping plovers nest at Sandy Point and, uh, and at Hammonasset. Mm. So stay away, keep your dogs away. <laughs> Use your long lenses. Ready? Who's smallest? Brown Thrasher. Brown Kestrel. Thrasher. The Kestrel. Largest? Great Horned Great, Owl. Great Horned Owl. Let's find out. Oh, that's right. Oh, I'm right. Anybody get them all? Um, A lot of people think ospreys are, are larger than they are. They're a big bird, but they're not that big. All right, let's see what we've got next here. So next we got some uh, close-up photos of birds. Well, actually they're not close-up photos, they're 
cropped photos, cropped a lot, like this bird. Got any idea what this is? Robin? American Robin, yes. So let's take a look at these. Titmouse? Up in Titmouse, yeah. Well, the answers are going to come later. Cuckoo bear. I'll go back. What would you say? Cuckoo bear. Okay. How about this guy? Yeah, down the woodpecker. I'm, I'm looking at this woodpecker, like, A, I think it's a woodpecker, and I'm like, if not Downey, I think Harry's the only other option that really kind of clicks in my mind. Yes, Downey. We shall see. How about this guy? Blue Jay. Blue Jay. Anybody differ? That's a good question. This uh, one's a little, this one's a little Bob Link. Bob a Link. Downy Woodpecker. Not sure. Anybody else? Mm. Nope. Still looks like the bird behind you. But... Oriole. American goldfinch. I'm not sure. Anybody else? Baltimore Oriole. Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Yeah. I'd vote for Oriole also. Mm. Toby. Cooper's Hawk. Ooh, Cooper's Hawk. When I get it, I'm not getting a clear picture. Is that the way you're starting this? Yeah, these are these are real close up, so some of them are pixelated. Yeah, okay. Just want to make sure I just joined, so I. Hmm. All right, we'll get to the answers after Monica. Hi, Dennis. Thanks for having me on tonight. Um, Thanks for coming. So in September, last week of September and the first week of October of last year, I got to go to Brazil for the first time. Um, to a place called the Pantanal. It is, for those of you who don't know where that is, it is kind of on the left-hand side of Brazil, um, to the left-hand side down kind of in the middle. Um, and supposedly it is the, it is known for the, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's basically the best place in the Western hemisphere to see birds and wildlife. Um, so I was there for 10 days and I got, I think 168 different, 168 lifers. So that was, that was a major, wow. major trip for me. Um, this is a crane hawk. And what was very interesting about this bird is that they are called crane hawks because they stick their legs into crevices and use their talons to pull out like bugs and eggs. So on this log, there was um, some white rumped and white winged swallows that were nesting there. And this hawk would, would go over to different parts of the log and actually stick its leg in. Um, it wasn't successful in, ca in catching anything, but it was really fun to watch the swallows dive bomb it. <laughs> so, I so I think that was, a, that was one of my favorite experiences watching that. Oh, if you wanna go back to the um, first slide. I didn't tell you what that was. 
Oh, it's coming up again. Oh, is it? Okay, good. So these are proboscis bats. Um, they are actually probably only about three to four inches long. And actually they were all, there was probably 10 of them that were all lined up on the tree trunk. So like, if you were not super close to them, you wouldn't even know that they were there. Um, so that was really, really cool to see. You almost don't know that they're there now. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I had a hard time even seeing them with my bare eyes, honestly. Um, but it was really cool to see them so up close. And well, caimans are everywhere in, in the Pantanal. Um, we were on the river. Um, they have a state park down there called uh, Meeting of the Waters State Park. So basically it's all one large preserve and probably hundreds and uh, probably hundreds of thousands of caimans there. But I, I just loved how this, um, this butterfly uh, actually will lick the salt from the crocodile's eyes or the caiman's eyes, sorry, it's not a crocodile. Um, but that's what the butterfly is doing that we're doing right there, which was kind of neat. I think you still don't want to meet the teeth. <laughs> uh, I have a fun, I have a funny story actually. Um, you, most of you probably won't believe me, but I have video to prove it. Um, I got to pet a wild caiman while I was down there, and it was not a pet, or and it was not a baby, and it was not vicious. Uh, nope. So we had, um, we had come back from the river, it was dusk, and the boat driver um, had gotten out because there was a caiman right next to the boat. And he had gotten the caiman away from the boat and then sat on it. <laughs> and then he kind of waved us over and said, you can come pet it. Um, so we all, we all did and didn't do anything. It just sat there. Where? It was really cool. With his body still on it, holding it down. No, no. Actually, the guy walked away as soon as I got as soon as I got over there. I got over there last. Yeah. The guy walked away, but everybody laughs about that. And where <laughs> Where did you pet it? On the tail. Uh. I wasn't. I wasn't that brave. <laughs> so this is a. I think it's a great kiskity. I'm not sure. I. Yeah. I know it's a kiskity, but I'm. But I'm not sure the um of this how big this one was. I don't know. I just happened to be walking around one of our lodges, and I would just happen to see it catch a lizard, and it was like banging it and whacking it on the um on the walkway, which was really cool to see. I didn't know I didn't know these guys didn't know flycatchers did that at all. Kiskadees are flycatchers. If you guys didn't know that. Uh, this is a uh, it's a capuchin. Um, this was a very fresh capuchin, actually. Uh, in one of our lodges, um, they were all over the trees behind our behind where we were uh, sleeping. And this one would just sit in the tree, and it just kept ripping the fruit off like there were mangoes. And it would put its mouth on the branch, and then and use its hands to rip the fruit off. And then it would actually throw them down. So they're actually really smart. You got to give them credit for it. I just, I just love the sassy shot of it sticking its tongue out. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. This is a yellow rump cacique. Um, probably one of the more populous birds down there where we were. Um, they nest in large groups, kind of like monk parakeets, but their nests are separate. And I just love, I love their blue eyes. They're, I mean, their eyes are just so different from any birds that we have up here. Um, so it was really fun to watch them. All right. So this is a Rufus belly thrush and it's chick. Um, I think this was towards the end of the trip actually. And we were gonna do a safari. And a lot of the time, like during the hot part of the day we were just hanging out at the lodge. And I took my camera out and just wandered the grounds. And I happened to see this little, this little one with its mom. Um, and it was actually very tame. I mean, you could walk right up to it and it didn't do anything. Um, so it was really fun to see mom bringing back food for it. So cute. This is another, this is a uh, black and gold, um, black and, now, I'm, 
I can't, I'm blanking on the name of the monkey right now. But anyway, we saw several families with babies, but this was probably the youngest baby that we had. Um, it was just really cool to see, see such a little one. This, this was a bat that one of um, the people that I was on the tour with spotted through her binoculars. I, I believe it's a species of broad nosed bat, but I just thought it was so cool looking and I, I rarely get to see bats around. So those are just really cool to see. Great job. Yeah. Alrighty. Anteater, I think this was one of the targets for, for most of our group. Um, actually the uh, anteater is one of my, is my friend's favorite animal. So this was a really a special encounter with her, for her. Um, so we had gone out a couple, a couple times. It took us a couple times to get this. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of the um, land out there is owned by um, cattle farmers. So there's all barbed wire everywhere. But we were able to get into the um, get onto the land and kind of track the anteater down. And they're not they're not the best at sight, but they can smell really well. So um, you just have to keep that in mind that they'll smell you before you even know that they're there. Um, so, but this one just walked right in front of us. How do you track a, an anteater? I mean. A lot of the guides down there are really good at what they do. Okay. Um, they they can they can spot things. I mean that I couldn't find right away. So the key is to just stay downwind so that they can't smell you. And they also track really well by like feeling the ground. Um, so we just had to make sure we stayed downwind, and everything worked out perfect. And we were able to see it actually getting ants out of some of the termite mounds down there. <laughs> Uh, these are Nande, uh, Nande parakeets. Um, they're also called Nande conyers um, in the pet trade. Um, but for but these guys are native to Brazil, and uh, we had, we were lucky to get a nice flock of four or five of them. And I thought it was really interesting that they were feeding as a group on this one mango. They were all just going to town on it. Um, I've never seen birds share like this, so that was pretty interesting watching that behavior. This is a little green woodpecker. Um, this was actually a really hard shot to get. Uh, their coloring is like a, not really green, but it's like like a grayish brown color. So, but I love um, how you can see his tongue here and it's eating, I can't remember the name of the seed, this uh, tree that it was eating off of, but I just, I love woodpeckers and uh, the barring on this one is just super gorgeous. So was this, a full grown one or a youth? Correct. I believe this was an adult. I I couldn't tell you on just based on the fact that I don't see a gape on this bird okay. and it was alone. I'm going that it was an adult. Thank you. All right, next. <laughs> oh, and can't go to can't go to the Pantanal without seeing jaguars. Um, so Pantanal is really well known for its uh, jaguar population. Especially, especially along the river. And if you, the best chance of seeing one is to go during the low, low, um, low river season when the, I should say the dry season, um, cause they'll come down to the water when the water level is really low and you'll get better looks at them that way. So dry season, I think right now they're in the wet season. So you'd wanna go between like July and November, I think. Um, so we were at the perfect time. This is um, a mom and her cub, uh, not a little, little baby. So this one I think was a year old, the baby, but it was just nice to see the mom and mom and cub together. And a pink tongue out. Yeah. Um, so we got to do some really cool, cool uh, safaris down there. We did some night safaris. This is a common paraki, which is in the night jar family. It is smaller than our common nighthawk. And so we got lucky several times to find probably 15 or 20 of them on the um, on the roads. So this is one of my best shots that I got out of it, um, considering it's pitch black. Um, 
but one of my favorite birds of the trip, I think. Oh, capybaras can't can't go to there without seeing capybaras either. Um, so this is one of the night safaris we did, and we were just coming back to the lodge, and we just happened to see capybara crossing the road in front of us. And then these guys are probably the size of a small dog at this point. Um, so they were, were really little. It was just really one of a kind to see such little babies nursing. Um, we had lots of family families of capybaras down there, but the babies were all like uh, weaned and and on their own. So this was this was definitely a special moment, I think, for the whole trip. Next. It was sun grebe. Uh, this was one of my target birds for the trip. Um, and you can see why people love them. Look at their feet. Their feet are black striped, which you can only see out of the water. Usually they don't come out of the water because um, like our grebes are very, very awkward on land. Their, their legs are placed farther back on their body so they can't walk very well. But we got this guy to come out of the water, which was really cool. Love the face too. Are they also related to coots? I'm seeing your question. I don't know. I would say no. Coots, coots are really good at walking on land. Grebes are not. I would say they're not, but don't quote me on that. Right. Thank you. This was one of our hardest species to target for this trip. This is an adult agami heron. Um, they are very, very, very hard to see. Um, and this was the, actually the only shot of the adult that I got. So I'm really happy with how it came out. Um, they like to hide in the undergrowth and stuff. So um, it was just very difficult to even find this one. Um, but they're very beautiful birds, like a blue and purpley um, tones to their feathers. We also got lucky to see a juvenile out, but the adult definitely takes the cake for me. This was the most prized bird of this trip, I think. This is a bare-faced curacao. Um, this was at, this was at our very last lodge. So they had, um, they would put food out for the birds every morning, probably like 6.30. And this, this is the dad, no wait, this is the mom. This is the female with one of her two chicks. So cute. And the, and the chick would actually get up on the feeder and, and try and get some food for itself. So that was pretty cute to see. All right, next. Oh, this is, this was probably my top two favorite birds. This is a chestnut ear to Arasari. Um, related to the toucan, um, it, it, this is a bird that I was targeting on my way, to, that I had on my target list for this trip. And it came out perched right on the open branch for like a split second, got a couple shots off, and then it flew up into the trees. So I count myself really lucky that I got this shot off. Uh, this is a kawadi, a very pregnant, oh, nursing one. This is an adult female kawadi that came to the bird feeder the couple mornings that we were there. Um, so it was really cool to see. I really wanted to see one of those. We also have those in the United States. Down, you can find them in Arizona as well, but definitely cool to see these. I want to apologize for not putting the toucan in. Oh, did we miss that one? Yeah. That's okay. I missed it when I grabbed the photos. I'm sorry. No, you're good. I mean, we had a toco too. We had a couple of the toco toucans, but I mean, if you guys know the Fruit Loops box, that's what we saw. I'll see if I can bring it up when we're finished with the slideshow. Because it's a no really worries. good photo. All right, so here we go. You say tufted titmouse? Hmm. Tufted titmouse. Downy or hairy?
Harry. That's easy. This one's a toughie. Any other thoughts about this? Uh, Bob Link, I don't know. You got to go with this. Theater <laughs> Waxwing? Yellow belly, no. Huh. Red belly woodpecker. Red belly, wow. This section here. Great shot. Say Oriole, which Oriole? Baltimore. Yep. Well. Cooper's Hawk, I don't know. There you go. Cooper's Hawk. No, it's a show. It's not a Cooper's Hawk. That looks more like a shark shin to me. Maybe it's because it's so squatted up, but. Yeah, it's a Sharpie. Well, but, you know, from from that photo, it's hard, hard to tell. Yeah, definitely, for sure. All right, here we have some bird silhouettes. Oh. Northern mm. Harrier. I would go with Harrier as well. That Northern looks Cardinal. Like, yeah, C. Northern Cardinal C. Red tail. Oh, that's, a, that's a bald eagle. That's a bald eagle. It kind of looks like a flying plank. <laughs> Brown creeper. Creeper. Brown creeper. Uh, common grackle. Common grackle. Ready duck. Yep, ready duck. Here we go with the answers to these. It was Northern Harrier. That rum patch was a dead giveaway. The which? The the white rum patch. Yeah. Oh, there right it here. is. Uh huh. Right. Right. Cardinal. Oh. And the grackle. So let me see if I can. Go over here.
You see that? There's the Toko toucan. That was definitely one of the coolest birds to have come to the feeder. Which is so cool. It's such a strange looking bird. They they are odd. Their eyes don't even look real. They just look like somebody stuck marbles in their in their head. And you wonder how they could eat with that thing, but uh they're quite good at it actually. I guess it's from Yeah, practice. they like they like fruit. Fresh fruit. Yep. So any uh final thoughts? I want to thank uh, Monica and Donna for their photos. Well, and, thank you uh, for having me. Go on another thank trip, uh, Monica, and uh, bring your photos back for next time. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopefully for Columbia for 2025. So we'll see. All right. So thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you uh, maybe at Chapog Dam a uh, week from Saturday. Um, you can register on the website or um, we'll see you uh, uh, next month with uh, Birds of Main Island. So thanks for being here and uh, have a good evening. Dennis, there's thanks a question. So much. There's a question in the chat box here. Somebody's asking huh. about cameras and lens. Oh, what kind of yeah. cameras? Oh, what camera? I use a uh, a Canon Rebel. Um, I just recently upgraded to a T8i, so that's what I had was using for Brazil. And then I was using um, the Tamron 150 to 600 uh, G2 lens. Thank you. And I use I use Canon gear. I have a most of the pictures that you saw were taken with a Canon uh, 7D Mark II and a 400 millimeter prime lens with a 1.4 teleconverter. Uh, that's a crop sensor camera. What was the lens? Thank you. Uh, well, four, 400 millimeter. Okay. Any other questions? Just to right. thank you to the presenters. It was a lot of fun. And thank you, Dennis. Great. 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 Really Great. appreciate it.